A peptic ulcer is a break in the lining of the stomach or the duodenum, causing an inflamed lesion which extends into the submucosa. In peptic ulcer disease, or PUD, this causes dyspepsia, defined as pain or discomfort in the upper abdomen. It's mostly caused by a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, which accounts for one of two cases. And although 30% of Australians have H. pylori, only 10% will develop PUD. The second most common cause is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use, like aspirin. This is associated with one of three cases. Disease pathogenesis involves an imbalance between mucosal damage and mucosal defense mechanisms. Under normal conditions, we release prostaglandins, which are vital signaling lipids, stimulating blood flow, mucus secretion, and bicarb production. This helps our mucosal tissue create a protective barrier against the acidic gastric juices. H. pylori are a gram-negative S-shaped bacteria, which trigger chronic gastritis by releasing cytotoxins and provoking inflammation. This weakens those mucosal defenses by impairing epithelial integrity and altering acid secretion. They produce urease, which converts urea into ammonia, helping to alkalinize the surrounding pH. On the other hand, NSAIDs increase the risk of PUD by inhibiting COX enzymes. These convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandins through two main pathways. COX-1, which is always working to maintain gastric mucosal integrity, and COX-2, which turns on in response to inflammation. The anti-inflammatory action of NSAIDs comes from inhibiting COX-2, but the negative effects come from stopping the good gastroprotective function of COX-1. In terms of clinical features, epigastric pain occurs in 90% of cases. Other common symptoms include bloating, abdominal fullness, nausea, and early satiety. Gastroesophageal reflux may coexist. Complications can be remembered using the mnemonic BOP. Bleeds, obstruction, penetration, and perforation. If you're finding this helpful, please don't forget to subscribe. Upper GI bleeding may present with coffee ground hemodemesis and melena. Obstruction? Ulcers can block the pyloric sphincter, causing satiety, bloating, and pain. Penetration. Lesions can puncture into adjacent organs like the pancreas without causing perforation into the peritoneal cavity. Perforation. This will present with shock and peritonitis. You can investigate for H. pylori infection using three main methods. First, urea breath testing. Patients are given a drink with urea that's labeled with a carbon isotope. If the bacteria are present, their urease enzyme breaks it down into labeled bicarb. This is then absorbed into our blood and exhaled as labeled CO2, which we can then measure in a breath test. This has a higher than 95% sensitivity and specificity. Second, fecal antigen testing. A stool sample can be analyzed using an enzyme immunoassay. This is more convenient but slightly less accurate. Third, serology, which detects H. pylori IgG antibodies in the serum. Given this stays positive for years after successful eradication of the infection, it can lead to false positive results. Invasive tests based on endoscopic biopsy can also be performed. Eradication for H. pylori infection requires a combination of drugs. First-line treatment in Australia involves a triple therapy regime combining a proton pump inhibitor, or a PPI, amoxicillin, and clarithromycin for one to two weeks. It's recommended to assess the outcome of intervention with post-treatment testing. This is best done with a urea breath test. For all complicated ulcers, ongoing PPI therapy for about 8 weeks is appropriate. This maximizes the likelihood of ulcers fully healing. I remember this mnemonic to recall triple therapy. Doctors should decapitate H. pylori. This stands for clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and PPI. I also remember that COX-1 is good, gastroprotective, and normal in our stomach. But having two COX is not a good sign. It's an inflammatory way of remembering things. That's why COX-2 selective NSAIDs, like celecoxib, 
causes much less mucosal damage. Thanks for watching Townsend Teachings. Don't forget to subscribe.